the time span and magnitudes of sea level rise are quite outside most of our awareness. And all of the effects of storm surge and geographic amplification and hitting at a high tide and a lunar high tide, all of that stacks on top of sea level. And so we really have to think of them differently because sea level won't recede for hundreds of years, actually probably a thousand years. Whereas a storm surge comes and goes like a tsunami or any other terrible coastal damage that we can rebuild from because the land is still there. So that's why I want to begin to get you to distinguish between the effects that are related to a transient event like a storm versus sea level. But to really see what's happening with sea level, I contend step back. Here's 160 years from 1850 to 2010. And over the course of that century in the middle of that stream, sea level rose seven or eight inches as a global average. And in fact, the little red straight line at the upper right is satellite data, which is more precise, but also shows that the rate of increase is, in, is actually getting steeper. Even when climate has changed quickly in the past, it has not warmed this quickly, to our knowledge. In 500 million years of pretty good records, in the geologic record, we are warming 55 times faster than ever before. So we're kind of running the experiment to see how quickly you can melt the ice sheets. Superstorm Sandy got the world's attention. It alerted people to things that many of us have talked about and studied and contemplated what could happen. But we all saw in stunning detail in a place that few talked about before. Shorelines breached, homes washed away, cars floating out of tunnels, subways literally submarine. And two days later, by some amazing timing, I was interviewed live on British television for the morning show. It was 3.30 for me in Florida. But, um, and the commentator said, so Mr. Englander, on page 121, you wrote about this storm. How did you predict it a week before it happened? <laughs> and I, if it hadn't been 3.30 in the morning, I probably would have come up with some clever line about being able to see the future. But I told him the truth, that I hadn't predicted Sandy. And I was as stunned as anybody that it would happen a week after the book was published. I dove up under the Arctic ice cap in 1985 and 87, and we had to drill holes through 10 feet of ice. That multi-year, three-meter ice is gone. Almost all gone. And that has big impacts for our weather and a lot of things, but it doesn't affect sea level because it's floating sea ice. And just like ice cubes in a glass, as they melt, they don't change the level of liquid in the glass. When you add new ice cubes to the glass, it changes the liquid. Antarctica's got even bigger mountains. It's a much bigger island. It holds seven times the amount of ice as Greenland. And when these ice sheets melt, they are going to have the big impact on sea level rise as this century goes into the next century. And we need to talk about that because there's some, there are some scary implications, and yet there's some actually intriguing and challenging opportunities. And that's what I want to talk to you about tonight. Knowing where things are headed, we should figure out ways to protect assets, reduce our risk for us, for our family, for our communities, for businesses, investments. But again, we have time. But it's going to be huge. It's going to get into not only the engineering, the real estate issues, the geo geologic issues, it's going to get into sociology and psychology and governance and what happens when a country disappears, where do its people go, do they keep their votes at the UN. I mean, it's going to change everything this century. And it has already started. Sea level rise wasn't an issue for South Florida. It was not only every coastal city in the world, from Manila to the Maldives, from Bangladesh to Boston, but it was cities on tidal rivers, such as this one. The Washington Monument's on a floodplain. The Potomac is a tidal river. Sacramento has as much vulnerability to sea level rise in earthen levees as New Orleans. The point is that sea level rise, once you understand its certainty and its magnitude, is a game changer. And we need to start understanding that. 